how does the U.S. foreign policy and U.S. domestic policy, mostly the, the drug war policy, how that affected immigration in that the normal story is that, oh, it's just people that want to come here for a better life. Yeah, that's true. But it, but it takes a lot to to leave your homeland and travel thousands of miles away. Um, can you kind of uh, expand on that on 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 U.S. relations with the uh, with with Latin America and, 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 and some of that? Yeah. So I think the, the big focus should be on the drug war here. There, there has been a lot of U.S. policy in all these countries where we have, uh, you know, in, in the name of fighting communism, overthrown governments in favor of even worse, like right wing actors. And, uh, you know, that's not to necessarily say that like the Sandinistas or whatever kind of socialist was cropping up in Guatemala or wherever else were great people. Um, but a lot of times the, you know, governments that the U S supported and overthrew, you know, that, that leads to instability. It's not every generation. It seems that countries have the ability to rise up and, and like a leader to come up, that's not corrupt, you know, and to have a real revolution. And so if every time a country has a revolution, you overthrow that government in favor of a more violent right-wing government that probably long-term guy has a pretty negative effects on that country, but I'm not like a, a long-term expert in like Latin American foreign policy. Uh, there's this great book, the Jakarta method that goes through how the U S like went through and, and did all these coups and revolutions in all these countries. And uh, through the school of the Americas supported different generals who ended up taking charge uh, of their countries or ran pro like assassination programs to kill the communists and stuff. So there's all that terrible stuff. Uh, but I think the war on drugs is probably the biggest issue. And that just doesn't occur in the US. You know, the DEA and the FBI are constantly carrying out operations in other countries, almost as if they were like CIA agents in Afghanistan or something like that. I remember there's a story I think from like 2015, where there's a couple women in in Honduras who were on a, a river at night and their boat bumped into a boat of some DEA agents and they shot and killed two pregnant women. They assumed that because they're on the river at night, they're smugglers. And, and so the, you know, these kind of little stories and rarely do they even leak into the mainstream. But I think the main thing is, is that Americans uh, are very wealthy and have a very large appetite for drugs, particularly like cocaine. And those drugs are because of the American war on drugs. And we like to pretend that we have like these pur puritanical values and beliefs and that we don't use all these drugs that we apparently do even though the you know current president's son uh was you know an admitted extreme drug addict right uh you, we have all these you know thirst for drugs and yet we want to pretend like we don't so they had to be sold on the black market and in the u.s the, you know this has impacts on you know different communities uh you know they used to say it was the inner cities but now if you go into any i was looking living in New Hampshire. And I mean, there's rampant heroin problems. It's, it's not, you know, you can't say it's in the inner cities. It's in like these different uh, apartment complexes, right? Where, you know, the, the drugs are just absolutely rampant. Uh, but in, you know, smaller countries, El Salvador, uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, they, they have smaller economies. And so, you know, the, the drugs trafficking through those economies means that, you know, there's uh, millions and billions of dollars at stake, and it could only go to people who are willing to work in the black market so you know carlos i know that you're a hustler but i don't know if you're willing to like you know do the the drug lifestyle where you know you risk being arrested and killed you gotta pay off people and all that and, and so it really the only people who end up doing that are those willing to take like the big risks and they probably have some more um you know likelihood of engaging in violence right <laughs>